Get ready, Armored Core fans, because after nearly a decade of anticipation, the long-awaited sixth installment in this epic franchise is finally on its way. We're excited to bring you a preview of Fires of Rubicon since the three-minute trailer was released last week. After watching that latest trailer, we could not wait to preview it later as it was too amazing and badass, but still brought me back to everything we loved about the previous high-speed mech combat games. For those new to the Armored Core universe, we'll take you on a journey through the franchise's history, highlighting why these games have a dedicated following, despite not being as mainstream as some others. And for those who have been eagerly waiting for the next chapter, we'll give you a taste of what to expect, even though details have been scarce and still shrouded in secrecy. We can tell you this much. The developers at From Software must have been hard at work on Armored Core 6, all while basking in success by releasing classic hits like Dark Souls, Elden Ring, and Bloodborne. So, prepare to immerse yourself in your custom mech, sci-fi world that drops August 25th, 2023, for all major platforms. The first Armored Core game released in 1997 is set in a dystopian future where corporations have replaced governments as the dominant forces in society. The player takes on the role of a mercenary pilot, hired by various corporations to perform tasks from escorting convoys to attacking enemy installations. The game's story unfolds through mission briefings and cutscenes, which reveal more about the world and the various factions vying for power within it, along with many hidden story elements that players can uncover by completing certain objectives. With heavy emphasis on crazy detailed customization of your mech, along with strategic gameplay that almost becomes philosophical, players can purchase and equip a wide variety of weapons, armor, and other equipment for their mechs, allowing them to tailor their loadout to any specific mission or playstyle. The game features a variety of enemy mechs and vehicles, each with its own strengths and weaknesses that the player must learn to exploit. The first Armored Core game had little buzz surrounding it that summer, but word spread like wildfire. This game would set the tone for a series of games focused on mech customization and tactical gameplay designed for the discerning gamer with higher than average game skills. While some releases may have faltered or felt rushed, the franchise has remained a stalwart of the gaming world, delivering challenging and rewarding gameplay experiences to new and old fan bases. While there was a focus towards multiplayer modes later in the game's history, there was some mixed reception from players feeling the game was best suited in the single-player format, along with multiplayer getting cancelled in regions such as North America and Europe due to lower player counts. However, the real reason these games may have never reached mainstream success was not due to its few hurdles, but probably due to its steep learning curve, which I would agree is one of the more complex games that require a significant amount of effort to master. With a lack of marketing and now an even more limited platform availability, this franchise still has maintained a dedicated fan base over the years. With the limited information we know and the limited cinematic trailer footage released, we do know players will still have that high-speed combat feel that made Armored Core such a beloved franchise. We know that the ruined planet Rubicon is where the energy source called Coral has been found, along with abandoned industrial ruins where many of your missions will be set. Game director Masaru Yamamura quoted, It's an intricate and multi-layered world brimming with megastructures and enormous underground facilities built by its former inhabitants. These structures cover a planetary surface racked with extreme cold and contamination in the aftermath of the Great Disaster, and the player will be exploring these various environments as they proceed." End quote. Yamura went on to explain, There will be missions where you're fighting across sweeping battlefields, very combat-oriented, but you'll sometimes be recovering data logs from wreckage and doing other side objectives too. Customization will be a core element of this game, as you'll have access to a vast array of parts to upgrade and fine-tune your mech's power. You can experiment with custom loadouts using four slots to hold weaponry, one for each hand and two on the back. You'll have a variety of weapons to choose from, from bazookas, gatling guns, split missiles, plasma rifles, and many other popular choices. New close-range weapons will be exclusively equipped to the left hand. These include a cluster bomb thrower, a chainsaw or pulse blade, lances, and other unique weapons. Since the main weapons are firearms, the melee weapons focus on individuality and strength. You'll also be able to create your own look, like custom paint jobs and liveries. Combat gameplay will introduce some new features like the Assault Boost, which will activate movement skill enabling you to seamlessly switch between long-range gunfighting and close-range melee, 
providing a dynamic and fluid combat experience. According to Yamamura, the Assault Boost is an offensive action that will be instrumental in helping players chain abilities when fighting, allowing for a variety of playstyles. For example, players can activate the Assault Boost to make their approach while using machine gun fire and a missile salvo to stagger the enemy before using the Pulse Blade to score a direct melee hit once they're up close. Another new combat feature, Stagger, is where an AC takes too many hits over a short period of time, making it vulnerable for a short time. This element encourages players to keep up the pressure on opponents, and the damage inflicted varies from weapon to weapon, and can be affected by factors like distance, making weapon selection even more crucial in battles. Yamamura says that the pace and feel of the game is somewhere between Armored Core 3 and 5, with instantaneous bursts of speed and sudden changes of tempo that create thrilling and dizzying combat experiences for skilled gamers. This version of Armored Core will also come with their version of Big Boss Enemies, that will be differentiated in many ways, including huge combat helicopters, heavily armored mobile turrets, and unmanned heavy demolition machinery. The series' iconic big boss encounters will look more intimidating than ever, along with other challenging battles against ACs and humanoid mechs in high-octane duels. For fans familiar with Arena Mode, it will be making a big comeback in Armored Core 6, what is now being called a Combat Aptitude Evaluation Program that offers a series of battles against a wide array of specially customized mechs. The mode will challenge players to confront different AC frames and colorful characters to aim for the top rank. Whether you're a hardcore fan or new to the franchise, we hope this video has something for everyone. For younger gamers more unfamiliar with the franchise, we wanted to start off the video by giving you a taste of what Armored Core is all about, while also sharing the franchise's history and reminding you that single-player games can still be thrilling in today's gaming landscape. But let's not forget the true heart of Armored Core. Fast-paced, omnidirectional combat that's sure to get your blood pumping. With deep, detailed customization options and strategic battles, this game is not for the faint of heart. Armored Core may be shaping up to be one of the most challenging releases yet, and I can promise you that not all your friends will be putting in the dedicated hours. We can hardly contain our excitement for the late August release. Armored Core 2, released in 2000. Set in a world where humanity has fled Earth to colonize other planets, players take on various mercenary missions across a variety of settings. The game introduced several new features from the original three years prior, including a streamlined user interface and the ability to use a boost to fly short distances. Armored Core 3, released in 2002. Set on a ruined Earth where the remaining corporate factions battle for control of resources and territory, while players join a mercenary group known as Raven and take on various missions to earn money and improve their mechs. The game featured a new arena mode where players could compete against each other online. Armored Core Nexus, released in 2004. Set after the events of Armored Core 3, Nexus sees the player once again taking on the role of a Raven mercenary and battling various factions across a variety of missions. The game introduced several new features, including the ability to customize the AI of allied mechs and a new faction system that affected the story and missions. Armored Core, Last Raven, released in 2005. Set in a timeline where the factions of the previous games have merged into a single entity, Last Raven sees the player taking on a variety of missions and battling other Ravens to determine the fate of the world. The game introduced several new features, including a new targeting system and the ability to eject from damaged mechs and continue fighting on foot. Armored Core 4, released in 2006. Set in a world where humanity has rebuilt after a catastrophic war, players take on various missions as a mercenary pilot. The game introduces several new features, including a new primal armor ability that could protect the player from damage, and a new faction system that affected the story and missions. Armored Core for Answer, released in 2008. Set after the events of Armored Core 4, for Answer sees the player taking on missions that require battling other mechs. The game introduced the ability to use a boost, so you can fly longer distances, and a new operator character who provided information and support during missions. Armored Core 5, released in 2012. Humanity has retreated to fortified cities, and mechs are used for warfare. New features included a fresher operator system that allowed players to give orders to allied mechs, 
and a new Overt ability that could temporarily boost the player's mech performance. Armored Core, Verdict Day, released in 2013. Set after the events of Armored Core 5, the game adds features like the ability to create and customize entire squads of mechs and a new UNAC system that allowed players to create AI-controlled mechs that could assist them in battle. Let us know if you're eagerly counting down the days until you can get your hands on this epic mech combat game too. Please subscribe and smash that like button so we can continue to preview upcoming game releases.